Yeah, hello, good morning. Um, years ago, when I got my YP, um, early 60s, um, early 60s, late 60s, something like that, it was, I think it was about 68, 67, 68, anyway. I met a guy uh, in my YP, I was in the laundry, a guy called Alan Pounty. Alan Pounty, a young, young, he shouldn't really be there, you know what I mean, but he was just a bit, bit nutty, yeah? So they put him in a YP to, to, to control, to try and control him. No boy would put him in a little boy's prison, because he's that mad, you know? Anyway, he was in the laundry, and uh, his job, he was like a number one, he'd been there for quite some time. Uh, his job was just to make sure everything was done correctly, and he was a nutcase, you know? He was an nut, absolute nutcase, yeah? And he used to like stabbing people with these safety pins that you put, you know, safety pins. So we had big safety pins, and they put all the uh, other things like women's knickers and women's bras. They used to wash all that, believe it or not. You know what I mean? I swear on my life, seriously. So his job was to check it all, put it all on his safety pins, but he'd stab people with the safety pins in the, in the backside, and he used to do it all the time, you know. And he was absolutely crazy. He had to keep well away from me, mate. And that is a fruitcake. But... He was number one, and when everybody would be going, going out uh, to, 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 to the wings, Alan would stay in there for a couple of hours and help uh, the old boy and pack things up and do things. But I'm sure the old boy was getting older, you know what I mean? The way things were going in there. So, anyway, I'll get shipped out, I'll get moved on. And I ain't seen Alan for years. I'm on about years and years and years. So, I went to the scrubs and uh, I'm in Sea Wing, I'm walking across the yard, and I can't believe it. I went, nah, that can't be Alan Powley. So I walked a little boy, a little, looked like a little old man, got a bit bald on top, not, not quite a lot bald on top, yeah? But still very smart, but very old looking, you know? And I shouted out, Alan, and he looked around and he went, hello, Ray. You know, he still had that little voice, but looked very old. And I said, oh, how are you going? He said, yeah, well, I said, oh, you mate. I said, you ain't still away, are you? He said, yeah, yeah, he's been away for such a long time because he's just crazy. Don't stop hurting and stabbing people. He's, he's an absolutely schizophrenic psychopath. He can't, he is what it is, yeah. So I'm talking to him. He said, what are you up to? I said, well, you know, he said, look, come and come. So he got, got a screw. He said, look, can you let him in? He's he's done a bit of bird. Why let him in? I just want to take, take him to myself, show him some pictures that I've got. So I screw. said, go on, quit, I'll be up. So I had a quick cup of tea sitting down there and there's all pictures of the Craze, Ronnie Cray, Reggie Cray, but more so Ronnie, all round his cell. Letters, signatures, everything. Worth a fortune what he's got, you know what I mean? I swear. So I went, fucking hell, mate, where'd you get all this sort? He said, well, you know, being in Baltimore with Ronnie, um, you know how it is. And I thought to myself, oh, right, yeah, you know what I mean? Um, and then you're thinking, he's such a young kid. You know that Ronnie's been obliging this boy, you know what I mean? You know it, you just feel it, yeah? So he said, yeah, we got very close, Rails always in the cell, running around making his tea and toasts and everything and doing things, making his bed. And I thought, oh, Alan, do you know what I mean? I knew that Ronnie had been obliging this kid, you know what I mean? And he's such a nice boy, what can you do? You can't say too much about it, you know what I mean? It's not for me to say anything at that time, you're stabbed up by him, you know what I mean? Anyway. So he showed me everything in, in the cell and, and, and do you want anything? I said, no, 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 sweet man. He had all, I should have sort of picture, really. He had loads of pictures of Ronnie, Ronnie and Reggie and when, what, what Ronnie had done and painted and all his, uh, unbelievable and, and, and signatures of, anyway. So he's just there talking to me and, you know, uh, about Ronnie and what he was like in there. And uh, this was late, this is the late. I think it was the late 80s, eight, late 80s. Uh, I forget what I was finishing the sentence or whatever it was, yeah. And uh, he's on about Peter Sutcliffe. And, and I went, oh, fucking hell. I mean, come on, you've got a young kid. He's Peter Sutcliffe, Ronnie, Ronnie Crazy in there. And he was saying to me that when Peter Sutcliffe got cut in 1983 in Parkhurst, yeah, uh, they shipped him to, uh, they shipped him to a Baltimore saying he's a schizophrenic psychopath, yeah, but he's the one who got cut to pieces, you know, they, listen, if they send you to a hospital from, from a prison, you had a feet, because you get everything in, 
hospitals that are Broadmoor, you get real, well looked after, you know what I mean? It ain't like, um, ain't like uh, prison. When you go into Broadmoor, from people I'm sold, like Alan, you get all the medication you want, you get everything you want, you get more visits than anybody else, because it's a hospital, yeah? So people are saying they've been at Broadmoor, it's a bit, no, it isn't like that, mate. Obviously, so if you take liberties, you're going to get jabbed up, pushed, and put in, a, put in a, a unit and all that, but other than that, the food's fantastic, you get really, really looked after. So he was telling me about his Peter Sutcliffe, yeah? I went, mean, God, well, go on, tell me about it, what's up? He went, well, you know, he got involved with Peter Sutcliffe and this, that and the other, and, and uh, they had a little fight in, 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 in the recess, and uh, Roger, uh, Rennie, Roger, uh, Ronnie Cray bashed Sutcliffe up, and then Sutcliffe come back and bashed Ronnie up. It was a big thing, yeah? And then they become mates. I said, what? He said, they become mates. They was mates. They was like, you know, going to each other's cells and talking about, you know, when he said, mate, they was talking about people that had killed, people that had done this, people that had done that. He said it was like, it's not embarrassing because Alan Pant is a bit of a schizophrenic side of Anyway, he was right into it, yeah? But they was playing games with this Alan Paddy, without a shadow of a doubt. They was playing games. But then, I, then later on, um, I get uh, told uh, from Alan Pantley uh, that a guy called Nicky Smith uh, was there. Well, I remember Nicky Smith uh, getting put away and Nicky Smith had a bit, of, he was a bit schizophrenic sort of happy self, yeah? So sometimes they can send you to Baltimore to get uh, checked out to see if you are what you are and if you're if you're eligible to be put in a place like uh, Baltimore, yeah? Because Baltimore's not that easy to get into. Everybody wants to get sectioned off when they get sentenced, yeah? So they can go to Baltimore, you know what I mean? Get looked after. You know, you've got more chance of getting out of there what you have or not. Anyway, so he was telling me about Nicky Smith, right? And I said, oh, no, Nicky. Yeah, he said, yeah, he said, uh, you know, Nicky, me and Nicky was with friends and everybody. I went, okay. He said, you know, I like, really like Nicky. We can, Nicky like me and, and, you know, she's come to my cell, she's got his cell. And I thought, Nicky's not like that. He's not any way involved, involved in his sexuality, but like that, yeah. He doesn't like that at all. But young Alan was mate, he made a mate of him. And Alan was coming in there and making his tea and looking after him, but not nothing not sexual, yeah. But he was telling me that uh, Nicky, Nicky Smith, uh, bashed up uh, Peter Sutcliffe. Bashed him up bad, smashed him to pieces, mate. You know, really smashed him up, and it was so bad that the the, the the scar the scar he had on his on his cheek was opening up again. You know, not open. It was it was all closed, but he smashed it so bad that the cut was reopening. Yeah, and he got smashed to pieces. Smashed Peter cut, sucked it to pieces, and Ronnie Cray, uh, after the fight, uh, they put. Well, after the fight, no one ever got nicked, they didn't get nicked for it as such, yeah? So, uh, he was telling me, uh, Alan Pantley, that Nicky Smith, it's got to be the, it's got to be the same Nicky Smith, it can't be anybody different, it's got to be my mate Nicky, because the way he just described him to me, he reckons that uh, Ronnie Cray uh, went into, um, went into uh, Nicky's cell and put it on Nicky, and Nicky can, he, Nicky, He's a little bit, he doesn't look like he can have a, he's got a white, bad looking face, yeah? But he doesn't look as if it, as if it can be a problem, but he is a problem, Nicky. I've had it all my life with him, yeah? Roger, when he cried, Roger, what, when he cried, he's gone in there, so we go at him, and uh, Nicky's, you know, he ain't bothered with Ronnie Cray's, he don't give a monkeys who he is, you know what I mean? And he's in, gone in there, and he's had a go at him, had a go at Peter Sutcliffe, and put, put, bashing him up. And uh, Ronnie Cray went a bit heavy with uh, Nicky, and Nicky bashed him up. Well, not bashed him up, mate, give him a few clumps and put him away. Uh, put, well, I say put him away, put him away, you know, like, you know, he couldn't do nothing. He was shattered, mate, just smashed him to pieces. Nicky did, yeah? And Ronnie Cray went, went, walked out of his cell, the towel between his legs, but they shipped him out in seconds of that happening. So if not Ronnie Cray, Grass Nicky up, I don't know, you know, but I don't put him past him, put him, put that past him, you know. Um, Nicky, he was telling me, and apparently, that he got shipped out of that, that place within 
an hour of that happening, yeah? But Nicky only went there to get looked at. A lot of people go there to get looked at to see if they're, if they're going to be sectioned off and such, yeah? But they go there and have all these tests and bits and pieces. But Ronnie Gray came right unstuck. Nicky Smith bashed him up in a way, yeah? Didn't bash him up, bash him up, like stab him up and all that, which is, which, is, which is, that's what that's what he would have done. But he bashed him up, mate. Yeah, how about that? I couldn't believe it when he told me. I thought, okay, it's got to be... I mean, I've never spoke to Nicky about it, Nicky Smith. I haven't really heard anything about it, but it's the only Nicky Smith that, that I know. And it can only be that Nicky, because I know he went to Bournemouth. I know he went there to get sectioned off, and I know they, 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 they shipped him out there, yeah? Uh, they took him to Grendon. That's it, they shipped him to Grendon and Underwood. Uh, that's where he went. So that, he must have been sectioned off to go there, you know what I mean? Yeah, to, to Grendon Underwood. So they chucked him out of Bournemouth because of, because of Ronnie Cray. I think Ronnie Cray went and grasped him up, mate. Yeah, how about that? It's, I mean, come on, how can a geezer do that, Ronnie Cray, what he's, all what he's gone through? So, well, you don't, well, say what he went through. They, they let everybody else, they let all their, all their mates get big bird down to them, didn't they? So, you know, I couldn't put him, nothing past him, you know, but Alan Pounty, uh, you know, we sit down and talk to him. I remember this so well, you know, it was, what it was, uh, I went to see the other day, I went to see a mate of mine, uh, used to be Nicky Smith's best pal. You know, and we had me and my mate Terry went to a cafe in Greenfield and sat down and like talked to him. He was talking lots about Nicky, you know, and lots of when you start talking about people, lots of things come out, you know. And he was talking to me about you know the, the time there was a guy called Bertie Winkler, yeah, and uh, Bertie Winkler caused a bit of problems. He was a big, short guy, but big, muscular guy that had a row um, with Nicky. Said something to Nicky, and there was a baseball bat involved. Uh, Nicky smashed this guy to pieces, smashed him to pieces, you know. And uh, the guy said to me, No, it wasn't Nicky, it was me, Ray. I'm the one who pulled the baseball bat out of the boot and bashed him up. It was you and Nicky that was on the floor fighting. I can't remember that. Do you know what I mean? It all comes back to you, you know. It, you know? He said, You was on the, on, the, on the floor fighting, you was bashing Nicky. I went, No, I can't remember that. I always thought Nicky, and anyway. Then, then it all come back. Then it all come back. Um, was talking, I went, no, you know, and then he said, yeah, Nicky went to Walmart to get sectioned off uh, to see if he was, he was, he, 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 he was suitable, but he, as I say, he shipped him to Grendon, so it can only be that one, it can't be no one else, and he, he, he gave Ronnie, Ronnie Cry a good idea, not well, I say good idea, he didn't stab him up or anything like that, but he bashed him up, mate, when he come in and he got him about Peter Sutcliffe, but Nicky bashed Peter Sutcliffe right up, mate, you know what I mean? I mean, Peter, Suck, P Peter Suckcliffe thought he was someone, and uh, Nicky bashed him up, mate, bad, and smashed all his face. You know, but done him really bad. You know, anyway, uh, bang, bang, well, and good morning, you know what I'm saying?